Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Emric Garam, who is in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Emric? Fine, thank you. How are you? Excellent, very good. And Emric is a business coach and consultant. And today we're going to talk about how to reach your business goals using a positive approach. So um, tell me, Emric, what, what is what is special about the way you help people achieve their business goals? What is special about helping? Uh, this is a really large question there. Um, do you mean uh, how to set business goals and get people to come together and achieve them, for example? Exactly. Okay, all right. So a business goal should be like inspiring to future clients and uh, customers so they can buy it. If there is no inspiration, there is no drive for that. I think that uh, people are going to be like, uh, yeah, uh, what is, right? Mm -hmm. So it's always the easy way, not the hard way. A good business idea should be speaking for itself. For example, if you create an easy way to, a cheaper way to, a faster way to, it's always about time and money, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And once you have your idea, you can create a group, like a mastermind group around this idea, for example. Usually it starts with people you know already, the inner circle. And then if they like your idea, they will talk to their friends, who will talk to their friends, etc. So how do you, how do you assess um, uh, whether you have the right um, business idea, whether it is easy or compelling enough? Because sometimes people think something that I think is compelling is not very compelling to, uh, to anybody else. So how do you figure out whether you have something that's actually compelling? Well, as I said before, it should be like a, a, a drive in itself. I mean, the, if, if the idea is good, I, if the, it's going to help people one way or another, and another mm -hmm. uh, I think that it just, the rest just will flow or fall, I think. I mean, there's no, as I said, the easy way, not the hard way. And then, so if you, you can gather a mastermind group, uh, as you said, to help you with your ideas, how do you then find the, what, how do you f build the right team then to support you? Well, as I said, the right team is the people that are going to be motivated by uh, what you have to offer. If there is nothing that uh, drives them, uh, they're going to be like, uh, yeah, okay, what is, right? Does that answer the question? Yeah, 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 and then, um, and then, how do you, how do you then motivate that team to to really go out and and embrace and and bring your idea to market? I will remind them what they have already have achieved, you know, one by one, and tell them, okay, do you remember the first sale that you did, or do you remember the first big big things in your life mm -hmm. that you did that you accomplished, and this will already set the mind for attracting more of it. This is kind of energy. Right. So you tap into so you you tap into things that they've done before and sort of help them see that and that they have the capability to um to achieve even greater things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then how do you when you're I mean with any team like you will go through motivation dips right you know maybe everybody gets excited at the beginning of a venture or a project or whatever and then you know issues come up and maybe there's a bit of a motivation dip how do you help um, people to get through that inevitable dip that always comes well uh, it's not always work 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 you know? what i think is uh, that some from time to time it's uh, necessary to give them a break. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there is nothing that advances at one point and the, the team is kind of stuck, I would just like say, okay, you know what? Let's go and have a drink, for example. Right. Or let's go and have a bowling party, uh, something different so they can release. Because when it's too tense in your ideas, I don't believe it's uh, constructive. Mm -hmm. I think it's so then as a leader then you have to be able to gauge when the moment when it's the right moment to maybe dial things down a little bit or take a take a break for a moment yes absolutely. Yeah. 
But then, on, honest, yeah. yeah. But then on the other side, then there are times when you have to get everybody to speed up a bit, right? So how do you approach that when you feel like you need to inject more pace and energy into the project? I think the uh, very important thing to be is staying positive. Because if there is no positivity, there's no energy. Uh, if it's too much forcing onto people, it's not powerful. I, I believe that uh, if uh, you force people and you force feed people things or you force people to do things, they're not going to be as uh, motivated as uh, they are by being positive, by uh, implementing positivity will be like a reward, for example. Mm-hmm. Will be uh, sharing stories, anecdotes, uh, even jokes, and, uh, and and anecdotes. You know, it, it's very important all that for people to be on always on a high level of energy. Yes. Yeah. So, do you do you think that uh, unfortunately that we spend a lot more time maybe you know focusing on the issues and things that are maybe not working well than we do on really highlighting the things that are going well and focusing on the positive. Yes, I think so. I think too many people are, are going into the problems instead of uh, what is the achievement. Mm-hmm. They, um, it's a little like uh, they're going to step forwards and then they're going to three step backwards because of that. Mm-hmm. So they, they stay on the same level. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say like two steps up and two steps down because uh, as soon as there is a, a problem or difficulty that arises, they they're just like, okay, well, forget about everything I said before, and let's go to work. Right. I don't know if it's really conducive. And what we about the yeah. yeah. And what about the next step? So, so maybe you achieve some level of success, right? You know, with first time out, you achieve a little bit of level of success. Now, the the next challenge is then how do you sustain that success? So, how do you keep the team motivated and going when you've experience a little bit of success because sometimes there's you know when you achieve something you know people take their foot off the gas so what was the question so I'm, how I'm so how do you help people um how do you how do you get people to sustain success as opposed to just achieve it and then maybe it falls off a bit uh, this is kind of a very uh one-on-one kind of question in my opinion, it's uh, it's pretty much uh, individual, a mm-hmm. uh, different in this, and so it's it's kind of uh, you have to talk to them personally. It's not like a, a full team, and then uh, I'm going to talk to everybody, and everybody has the same kind of problem, and everybody has the same kind of uh, uh, struggles. No, it's not it's not that, that mm-hmm. like that. It's really not like that. I will I will take the elements who are uh, going into a, a plateau or they are not doing very well. And to them on one on one. That's my much what we need. So then, to that point, then uh, when you communicate as a leader, when you communicate with people, you have to figure out: uh, do you how different people like to be communicated with, rather than just one communication style for everyone? Yes, I would say that sometimes it's necessary to talk one on one with people. Mm-hmm. As I said, not everybody is uh, seeing the problem the same way, and this is good. Great things, by the way, because otherwise there will not be new ideas. Mm-hmm. But some people have have more um, struggles than others to adapt or to see things, and it's important for these people to have a personal support. That's what. And then how do you, um, so there's also, you know, as I said, there's a lot of energy at the beginning of something, a lot of create creativity. Um, how do you continue to be innovative and creative and, and not sort of get get stale or bogged down in, in bureaucracy once you've kind of established yourself? How do you keep that creative spark going? I would say that... Uh... As I said before, it's very important for from time to time to give ourselves a break. Mm-hmm. So I would detach myself from uh, an issue or a problem or a whatever to achieve. Then I would just like go away from it and uh, take myself a break for half an hour, an hour, half a day, whatever is necessary for having a new eye when I see this idea 
I don't know if you heard about that, but a lot of people, they have the best idea where in they are in this kind of state, where mm-hmm. they are between the work and um, taking a nap, for example, they will have the brilliant idea. That's mm-hmm. what I do. So take, take a step back, detach yourself a little from that problem or from that um, achievement, if you will, of the day. And then go back to it. Mm-hmm. So what okay. are yes, no, that's very good. So what um what other um what other piece of advice would you have for leaders today trying to you know create the best environment for their people? I would say two things. First, be more caring about your team, because if you care about your team, they will feel it. And there is uh, one uh, thing that I says a uh, very uh, uh, very famous, I would say, and said uh, term is that nobody cares until they know how much you care. So nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. The second thing, the second thing I would say is to keep a positive energy, uh, seeing the possibility that they all have in them, not to lower them them down in their own image, but just bring them up. That would be the two things. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you can bring them up with also being not only caring, but also injecting some kind of humor and fun. Why not? In the the, the Mm workplace. So, I think that when they care for and when they see that the people are really, I mean, that the leader is relating to them, I think they will, they will outdo themselves. That's my opinion. Right. So is that, is that where you develop what you would call a better level of, of connecting with your team? I would say so, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a book that um, explains this in more details. Is, um, can I uh, cite a book? Is yes, of book? course, yes. It's called uh, uh, The Happiness Advantage by uh, Sean Aiken, mm-hmm. and this uh, book explains in detail uh, uh, scientific research on the field and then uh, what they conclude. And uh, that's a pretty interesting book. I uh, strongly encourage that book to all leaders. Excellent. <clears throat> all right, well, we're coming up against the end of our time, um, Emric. Um, before we go, can you tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do and how they may, come and how they may contact you? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, my name is Emre Geram, E-M-R-I-C-K-G-A-R-A-M. I'm a business coach and a communication coach. And uh, if um, they need to uh, contact me, they will contact me uh, by uh, going to either my Facebook page or my website, which is emregeram.com. So I'm going to repeat E M E R I C K G A R A M dot com. Or they can also uh, send me an email with E G R A N Z at gmail dot com. E G A R A N Z at gmail dot com. Great. Well, thanks, Emric. It's been uh, it's been great talking with you. I'm glad we had the opportunity to catch up and. Uh, uh, you know, it's a fascinating conversation. And again, it's all about, you know, the, um, uh, Emmerich helps motivate um, business leaders and teams to achieve greater things. So my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.